Day number five of the 12 days of MLB rankings is here, and that means it's time to rank the best third baseman from every team in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season. Of course, I want to thank you guys for just the amazing support that you've been showing the series and that you always show the series. It's one of my most favorite things to do all year long, so keep it up. Keep dropping likes. Keep subscribing to the channel, comments, whatever it is. I love talking with you guys down in the comment section, having some arguments about why I'm right and you're wrong. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in the description. And without further ado, let's go see those third base rankings. Getting the third base started at the number 33 spot. I've got Jordan Diaz of the Oakland A's. Diaz played in 105 games in his career as an Oakland A. 10 homers, 12 doubles, 28 RBIs, hitting 227 with a 276 on base, 358 slugging, and a 634 OPS for an OPS plus an 81. While Diaz has the ability to hit the ball hard, we really haven't seen it too consistently at the major league level. He is going into his 23-year-old season, probably going to be playing every single day, so he'll have every opportunity to show the true talent that he has. But as of right now, Jordan Diaz is going to be the worst third baseman in today's video. Next up at number 32, I've got new third baseman of the Washington Nationals, Nick Senzel. Senzel, a former first round pick, number two overall back in 2016, has just simply never lived up to the hype. But the Reds really never allowed him to play the infield consistently, and that was his main position. Along with battling injuries, it's never been easy for Senzel at the major league level. A guy who in five seasons has a 671 OPS for his career. Seems like he's going to be playing every day at third base for the Nationals, or at least at some sort of infield position. If he's fully healthy, there's a world where Senzel could finally have his breakout at age 29. Until then, he's number 32. My favorite number up next at number 31, Brett Beatty of the New York Mets. I'm a huge Brett Beatty believer. I think he's going to be able to turn it around no problem. He's just way too talented of a hitter to have played this bad. But I have to be realistic and in the 119 games at his major league career, 11 homers, 12 doubles, 39 RBIs, hitting 210 with a 272 on base, 325 slugging, and a 597 OPS for an OPS plus at 65. It just hasn't been pretty. Hasn't looked great for Beatty and I got to keep it realistic based on what we've seen along with the defensive struggles. Just can't really put a much higher yet, even though I think he will definitely climb this list by the end of the year. In the top 30 started at number 30, I've got Nick Madrigal of the Chicago Cubs. Madrigal is a weird little player because he wouldn't be my choice at third base, but he's also kind of the safe pick. Defensively, you're going to get plus defense. No matter where you put him in the infield, he always has a great glove. At the plate, not so much. In the past, he'd been a high average guy, but the last two years has struggled with that. Therefore, his on base has gone down. He's never going to hit for power. Has a total of four home runs in his major league career. So he's a little bit of a mystery at the plate because if he's not hitting for average, Average, there's very little value there, but defensively, he's always going to be solid there. So while his ceiling is relatively low, his floor is decently high because of that major league glove. Next up at number 29, I've got Milwaukee Brewers third baseman, Andrew Monasterio. Monasterio finally got a shot at the big leagues in 2023, and it could have gone better. Three homers, 14 doubles, 27 RBIs, hitting 259 with a 330 on base, 348 slugging, and a 678 OPS for an OPS plus 87. He does walk a good amount. He's going to be a solid player. Again, has a little bit more value as a utility guy rather than just locking him down at third base, but it seems like it's going to be his position right now going into the season. Let's see what Monasterio can do with it. Until then, 29. Hey, what do you know? At number 28, we've got another utility man playing third base right now. That's going to be Santiago Espinal of the Toronto Blue Jays. Espinal is a solid little player. I mean, made the all-star team back in 2022, but kind of since then, the numbers have just been going downhill, and he doesn't really have much value at the third base position besides, again, being a good glove. He should be a utility player. That's probably how the Blue Jays are going to use him. Just right now, they don't have anybody because free agency has been a little slow this offseason and last year was definitely the worst of his career 93 games 248 average 310 on base 335 slugging and a 644 ops for an ops plus an 80 espinal is a depth piece playing every single day not going to rank him too highly baltimore orioles third baseman ramon urias is going to come in at number 27 for me again we know this will probably end up being gunner because he's just going to move over to third when jackson holiday inevitably gets called up but until then i'm going with ramon urias league average hitter at the plate again another utility man can basically play all the infield positions while he won a Gold glove in 2022 2023 was a different story just wasn't particularly that good especially at the plate where his numbers dropped especially the power numbers which was understandable for a guy like Arias. four homers 22 doubles in 116 games hitting 264 to 328 on base 375 slugging and a 703 ops for an ops plus a 98 another solid depth player here just missing out on the top 25 at number 26 we've got detroit tigers projected third baseman matt veerling veerling another utility player towards the bottom of these third base rankings here can play all the outfield positions played third even played a little bit of second base last year for the Tigers actually had a decent season he just doesn't really grade well at the position because it's not his main spot 134 games 10 homers 21 doubles 5 triples and 44 RBIs hitting 261 with a 329 on base 388 slugging and a 717 OPS for an OPS plus at 96 has a cannon of an arm but being a league average-ish hitter with only a cannon of an arm at a position that's relatively new it's going to be tough to get higher on these rankings getting the top 25 started at number 25 new third baseman for the Seattle Mariners Luis Urias 
Arias. Arias, again, probably better off as a utility guy. He can play third, short, second, probably even first at this point. After a couple good seasons in Milwaukee, he really struggled last year, did not look good, splitting time between the Brewers and the Red Sox. 52 games, he hit 194. Did have a high on base, though, at 337, but a 299 slugging gave him an OPS at 636 for an OPS plus at 76. I'm maybe being a little bit harsh dropping him down this far because he has had success before, but I'm a little bit of a doubter of Luis Arias. Last year really scared me. Pretty much everything we saw was like, oh, no. For the 24th best third baseman in Major League Baseball, let's go to the Windy City to talk about Yohan Mankata of the Chicago White Sox. It was an odd year last year, and Mankata did not pop off. He was a below league average hitter. I thought we were going to keep the streak here, but Mankata came a little bit back to earth in the odd years. Disappointingly, though, 92 games, 11 homers, 20 doubles, 40 RBIs, hitting 260 with a 305 on base, 425 slugging, and a 730 OPS for an OPS plus at 97. At the third base position, he's a little bit sketchy every once in a while. Sometimes you love him, sometimes you hate him there. And for a guy going into his 29-year-old season, it's a little bit of a make-or-break year for Mankata. Does he want to be a career major leaguer, or is it time for him to drop down to a platoon or even depth role? Like the last two seasons, a 674 OPS just isn't going to cut it, but he's also too talented to be as bad as he was last year. So let's see what Mankata shows us. I got him at 24, though. Had a really hard time ranking this next guy. At number 23, Michael Garcia of the Kansas City Royals. Garcia is disgusting at third base, like arguably one of the best defensive third basemen in the game. He also can play short and second. He's a very, very talented fielder. And at the plate, he hits the ball hard. He just doesn't hit it in the air and doesn't get a lot of great results. In 123 games last year, he hit 272 with a 323 on base, 358 slugging, and 681 OPS for an OPS plus at 88. So he's kind of a hard player to project because he does the things you like, except he hits the ball on the ground and he's got a great glove, really high floor, maybe even a high ceiling. I don't know what to do with him. But right now, based on what we saw, Michael Garcia is going to be number 23. Speaking of someone, what do you do with this guy? Anthony Rendon of the Los Angeles Angels coming in at number 22. Like, it feels criminal, but this guy just refuses to play baseball games, and when he has, he hasn't looked great. Outside of the COVID year, Anthony Rendon has been horrendous with the Angels. In those three seasons, he has combined for 148 games, 13 homers, 29 doubles, 80 RBIs, hitting 235 with a 338 on base, 364 slugging, and a 701 OPS for an OPS plus at 94. For a 34-year-old who defensively is not looking as strong as he used to, and at the plate is struggling, can't really rank him highly, and I think Angels fans are getting tired of this guy because he won't play. Seems like he has no interest in playing. I don't know what happened to Anthony Rendon, but it's sad because he used to be one of the best third basemen in the game. And then just missing on the top 20 at number 21, I've got DJ LeMahieu of the New York Yankees. Last year kind of felt like the first season where DJ LeMahieu started to look old. As a 34-year-old, kind of had not the greatest of seasons. 15 homers, 22 doubles, and 44 RBIs, hitting 243 with a 327 on base, 390 slugging, and a 718 OPS for an OPS plus at 96. A guy who we saw finish fourth and third in the MVP voting just a few years ago, definitely not the same player anymore. Again, taking over more of a utility role, playing short, playing third, second, first base. But right now, the way that his bat's rolling, it's going to be hard to keep him in that lineup every single day unless he steps up. Getting the top 20 started at number 20, everybody's favorite Philly, Alec Bohm. Yeah, Philly fans are going to get mad at me because I ranked him 20, but there's a good reason to. He's still awful in the field. I don't care how many diving plays you saw him make in the postseason. He's a horrendous fielder. He's not great there. He's improved. Doesn't mean he's good. Where I will give him props, though, is that at the plate, saw real improvements. 20 home runs is huge for a guy like Alec Bohm. Someone who used to be more of a contact king, developing a little more power is a big development for his game. Something to keep an eye out for. 20 homers, 31 doubles, 97 RBIs, hitting 274 with a 327 on base, 437 slugging, and a 765 OPS for an OPS plus at 108. He's got to lift the ball a little bit more, and those numbers could go up even more than they did last year. I'm not giving up on Alec Bohm. I liked him coming out of Wichita State. I'm just not going to rank him as highly as a lot of you Phillies fans would probably like. Coming in at number 19, I've got Red's possible third baseman, Christian Encarnacion Strand. CES for short is a barrel king. He was crushing the minors, ended up getting a call up. He's going to be fighting for Noel V. Marte for that third base position. Most likely won't be his, but I'm still going to rank him because I think he's very good. 63 games last year, we saw him hit 13 homers, 7 doubles, 37 RBIs, hitting 270 with a 328 on base, 477 slugging, and an 805 OPS for an OPS plus at 113. Defensively, definitely question marks at the third base spot. He's not looked great, but he's got some real pop in that bat, legit power, and in that park with that bat, he's a guy who could project for a ton of home runs. And then just slightly ahead of him, the other Reds possible third baseman this year, Noel V. Marte. Noel V. did get a majority of the playing time at third base last year when he got the call up, and he looked great. 35 games, 3 homers, 7 doubles, 15 RBIs, hitting 316 with a 366 on base, 456 slugging, and an 822 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. Didn't strike out much, a 20% K rate with a 6.5% walk rate. He looks like the most major league ready player of the two. 
too. It's just defensively, again, too, like he's got things to work on. He's not perfect, but he's only going to be 22 years old. And to show that kind of presence at the plate as a 21-year-old last year, all encouraging signs if you're a Reds fan. For the 17th best third baseman in Major League Baseball, let's talk about Ryan McMahon of the Colorado Rockies. I go back and forth on McMahon every year, but realistically, at the end of the day, he's a league average hitter who would probably benefit from leaving Coors, which sounds crazy, but I think he would. Great defensively at third base, absolutely elite with the glove, and he does put up good counting numbers, so like he always is going to find himself kind of in the middle of the pack of third baseman. 23 homers, 31 doubles, 70 RBIs, hitting 240 with a 322 on base, 431 slugging, and a 753 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus at 93. That's just what you get from Ryan McMahon every year. I'm waiting for the Rockies to eventually trade this guy, because I bet you they'd get a bunch back, and he doesn't feel like he's a part of their future plans. At only 29, though, man, I can't wait for this guy to maybe have a power surge one year. He hits the ball too hard. I want to see 30 homers from McMahon. Weirdly, at the exact same spot as last year, at number 16, I've got Justin Turner, current free agent, maybe of the New York Mets soon, hopefully. Turner, last year with the Red Sox, played first, played second, played third, mostly was a DH, but could be playing some third base this year. 23 homers, 31 doubles, 96 RBIs. All this guy does is mash. 276 average, 345 on base, 455 slugging, 800 OPS for an OPS plus at 114. The guy has quite literally been a plus hitter at the plate since he left the Mets in 2013. Last year was the lowest OPS plus of his career since then, and it was 114. He is a year older, 39 years now. But I mean, until this guy stops hitting, I'm not going to doubt him. For the 15th best third baseman in Major League Baseball, another former New York Met, that's going to be J.D. Davis of the San Francisco Giants. Davis made some defensive strides last year. The Giants placed him in better positions, and he made better plays with that cannon of an arm. At the plate, still was technically above league average with a 103 OPS plus after a 248 average, 325 on base, and 413 slugging. Where J.D. Davis really struggles is he swings and misses just way too much, but he has legit pop in that bat, 18 homers, 23 doubles, 69 RBIs. Nice. I don't know how much better of a player he's going to get, but he's pretty acceptable at the third base position now. Coming in at the number 14 spot, I've got Jake Berger of the Miami Marlins. Berger is a mashing boy. This dude absolutely rakes at the plate. Defensively, horrendous. An absolute butcher at third. But for a guy who hit 34 homers last year, finished with an 828 OPS, an OPS plus at 120, was even better with the Marlins. Like, he was disgusting with them in those last 50 games of the season. Part of the reason why they made the postseason, it shows how valuable his bat can be. Because again, in the field, horrendous. Not good. But even cutting down the strikeout rate in Miami, like, was so huge for his success. And if you hit 30 homers with almost 30 doubles, you're going to find yourself close to the top 10 here at third base. Next up at number 13, I've got Max Muncy of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Muncy seems to be the everyday third baseman. Still hits crazy power, 36 home runs last year and 105 RBIs. Did have a bit of a bounce back with a 115 OPS plus, so that was encouraging for him. A 212 average, 333 on base, 475 slugging, 808 OPS. Like, he definitely is still a very, very good hitter. Defensively, that's where you get a little concerned about Muncy and the fact that he does swing and miss as much as he does with that low average, but the crazy power numbers, the ability to get on base, Max Muncy's still awesome. Next up at number 12, I've got Eugenio Suarez, new Arizona Diamondbacks third baseman. First off, love the move for Eugenio going to Arizona. I can see him popping off there. Two, he improved defensively last year, which was a big problem with his game in prior years. Wasn't great defensively at the position, but 2023 played in all 162, good glove, 22 homers, 29 doubles, 96 RBIs, an American League worst 214 strikeouts for the second straight season. Season, 232 average, 323 on base, 391 slugging, and a 714 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus at 101, but the prior year he was 129. We've seen him put up crazy offensive numbers before. I didn't feel like dropping him down too far, but I do think he deserves to be right outside the top 10. And then just missing on the top 10, at number 11, I've got Josh Young of the Texas Rangers. I love Josh Young. This dude is a ball player. There are some holes in his game, like he is a bit aggressive and doesn't really walk too much. I swing and miss, but still put up great numbers. Part of the reason why the Rangers won that World Series, it was huge getting him back. In 100 122 games, 23 homers, 25 doubles, 70 RBIs, hitting 266 with a 315 on base, 467 slugging, and a 781 OPS for an OPS plus at 109. Defensively, needs to improve at third base. He's still learning. He's still getting there. But man, at the plate, like when things are going right for Josh Young, I love watching this guy hit. Was an all-star, finished fourth in the rookie of the year voting, and got that ring, but I have to keep him outside the top 10. Getting the top 10 start at number 10, Key Brian Hayes of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Gotta throw some respect on his name. Key Brian has been great. He was awesome last year, easily the best season of his career. Finally getting that OPS plus over 100 to 105. 15 homers, 31 doubles, 61 RBIs, hitting 271 with a 309 on base, 453 slugging, 762 OPS. Won the gold glove. We know how disgusting he is at the third base position defensively. I'm happy to see the bats waking up though.
though. So maybe it's a little aggressive, but I think Key Brian Hayes is a top 10 guy with the ability to go even higher. For the ninth best third baseman in Major League Baseball, I've got Isak Paredes of the Tampa Bay Rays. Isak was just so awesome last year. Now, granted, he is a dead pull hitter. Look at his spray chart. Everything's going down the line in left field, but he's making it work. He was fantastic. 143 games, 31 homers, 24 doubles, 98 RBIs, hitting 250 with a 352 on base, 488 slugging, and an 840 OPS for an OPS plus at 131. Shocker, ever since he got to the Rays, he's been awesome. Awesome, just continues to be a beast at the plate and he's only 25 years old could get even better maybe Paredes is someone to watch a really really fun player in Tampa dropping down one spot at number eight I've got Matt Chapman not currently on a team but he's gonna get paid last year was a bizarre year started off so hot then got ice cold then got hot then got ice cold I don't know what's going on with Matt Chapman but I had to move him down a bit still great defensively at third base of course but the numbers were just not that good 17 homers 39 doubles 54 RBIs hitting 240 with a 330 on base, 424 slugging, and a 755 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus at 108. Just want him to be better. We know what the top quality Matt Chapman looks like. We didn't see it last year. So depending on where he goes, it might end up being a benefit to him. But as of right now, I have to put him at eight. One of my favorite players in Major League Baseball right now is coming in at number seven. That's going to be Royce Lewis of the Minnesota Twins. I love Royce Lewis. I think he's got a great story. Former number one overall pick. Dealt with so many injuries, adversities, being called a bust. And in the 70 games he's played at the Major League level, he has shut those concerns up massively. Two seasons, 70 games at the major league level, 17 homers, 11 doubles, 57 RBIs, hitting 307 with a 364 on base, 549 slugging, and a 913 OPS for an OPS plus at 149. Doesn't strike out, gets on base, hits for power. The grand slam god. Royce Lewis is awesome. I love him at third base. Allows him to still be athletic without putting as much stress on his knees. This guy has the ability to completely turn this Twins franchise around and be that huge star player they've desperately been craving. Whenever they announce a City Connect jersey, I'll be buying a Royce Lewis one. Just missing on the top five again, coming in at number six, it's going to be Rafael Devers of the Boston Red Sox. Rafi Big Scoops is just a baller at the plate. The dude mashes. Defensively, he still stinks. I don't care if he's improved. He's bad defensively at third base, but at the plate, that's why you're paying him all that money. He's incredibly good. 33 homers, 34 doubles, 100 RBIs, hitting 271 with a 351 on base, 500 slugging, and an 851 OPS for an OPS plus at 126. The strikeout rate, 19%. The walk rate, a career high at 9.5 like these are all amazing things to see for Rafael Devers who somehow is only 27 years old he's a baby he's so good he's mashing at a young age totally worth that mega contract the Red Sox threw at him getting the top five start at number five Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros quietly had an awesome year last year 161 games 25 homers 28 doubles 98 RBIs hitting 262 with a 363 on base 441 slugging and an 804 OPS for an OPS plus at 122 the last two seasons combined you're looking at an OPS at 8 12 with an OPS plus at 127. Solid at third base. Not going to be the best fielder, but very solid at the position. Walked more than he struck out for the second straight season. Alex Bregman is such a dog. Shout out to my short king. You're listed at six foot. It's not true, but I appreciate you wanting to get there. Absolute dog. Coming down a couple spots here. At number four, I've got Nolan Arenado of the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, it's the first time Nolan Arenado kind of looked like a human. At age 32, he started to slow down a little bit, especially defensively. Not one of the strongest of his career. It's crazy. Like, he was still really good defensively. 5 OAA on the season puts him in the 89th percentile, but that's like way worse than he's been in the past. And I will say at the plate, the numbers are starting to get a little concerning on the percentile back end side. And it showed with the actual numbers as well in game. Outside of his first two seasons, this is a career low in home runs and doubles at 26 apiece. 93 RBIs hitting 266 with a 315 on base, 459 slugging, 774 OPS for an OPS plus of 109, the lowest of his career since his rookie season. So yeah, Arenado didn't look great. I'm not done on him yet. I mean, he's inside the top five. I still think he's awesome. It's just something to keep an eye on is how does Nolan Arenado adjust next season because there definitely needs to be one made. Jumping up a spot here to number three, I've got Austin Riley of the Atlanta Braves. Austin Riley getting dangerously close to that number one position at the third base spot. If he was a little better defensively last year, he has a legit argument because at the plate, arguably the best third baseman offensively. Third straight season of playing 159 games or more. He's a friggin' warrior. And it's the third straight season of 30 plus homers, 30 plus doubles, 90 plus RBIs. He hit 281 with a 345 on base, 
516 slugging, 861 OPS for an OPS plus at 128. Seventh in the MVP voting, all-star, silver slugger. Pretty crazy to think that this guy, the first two years, like he was horrendous and now is just turned into straight up one of the best players in all of Major League Baseball. Here's the crazy part. He's the same age as Rafael Devers too. So many good young players in Major League Baseball right now. Austin Riley's definitely one of them. And it drives me insane that the Mets are going to have to see this guy until 2033. How do the Braves keep getting these guys so cheap? Dropping down from the number one spot last year at number two, I've got Manny Machado of the San Diego Padres. Machado, of course, still disgusting with the glove. 97th percentile in OAA. After a crazy good year in 2022 at the plate, he did take a bit of step back in 2023 30 homers 21 doubles 91 rbis hitting 258 with a 319 on base 462 slugging 782 ops for an ops plus a 115 he struggled at times last year there's no doubt but i don't think that this is indicative of what manny machado is going to continue to do the rest of his career he's just way too good to be only 15 percent better at the plate than the league average hitter and with that nasty glove like it's really hard to bump this guy down at all it's just the dude at number one deserves some respect and of course that's going to be jose ramirez of the cleveland guardians j ram yes get the put at number one so excited love j ram he's so good short king as well 5'9, 190 let's go j ram shocker had another awesome year 24 homers 36 doubles 80 rbis while stealing 28 bases hitting 282 with a 356 on base 475 slugging and an 831 ops for an ops plus at 131 it was also cool to see him be good at third base defensively last year 89th percentile in oaa and you're looking at a guy who what, since 2017, including a 58-game COVID season, is averaging per 162, 33 homers, 43 doubles, 106 RBIs with an 891 OPS. Disgusting. This is the best third baseman in the game. It's just not even close, honestly. So there they are, my third base rankings for the 2024 season. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section below. I know you're going to tell me, so you might as well just comment right now if you haven't done so. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know what you're thinking. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content, especially the rankings coming at you. Follow me on all my social media. Giraffe Nick Mark links are in the description. And that's where I'm going to wrap it up. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video, and this will be a playlist to the 12 days of MLB rankings for this year. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for the amazing support, and I'll catch you all tomorrow for the left field rankings. Bye!